Hello, this is the Hardcore Legend Mick Foley, and I know when I want to keep up with the latest in wrestling news from around the world, I check in with Dead on Dave Productions. He covers a wide variety of wrestling topics, including the career of the Hardcore Legend. Don't miss it. Dead on Productions. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Dead on Day. It is Friday, April 10th, 2015. And you know what today is? It's your Smackdown review. I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to review it. Let's go! Let's cut this music, huh? Shall we? Yeah, all right. What's going on? Welcome back, guys. I'm glad you're here to join us today. It is time for your Smack Down review. And I feel like absolute garbage, but I'm going to push through because that's what we do here. So let's not gild the lily. Let's not take too much time. Let's start a moving. So let's get this review going right now as you guys know i do not watch smackdown or any of the things that i review until i get ready to the review them now my copious amounts of notes are now just instantaneous instantaneous copious that's correct so let's go ahead and jump right into it and i'm going to start watching smackdown and i will give you my live uncut uncensored unbridled opinion right now let's do it 10 minutes in first promo done in ring segment about 10 minutes about eight minutes actually after all the intros and stuff were done daniel bryan comes to the ring and talks about how it's been one of the best weeks of his career and all this and he recaps what happened to him you know getting busted open in the sheamus match and then wade barrett called him wade not bad news uh probably gonna get in trouble for that uh <laughs> Uh, bashing with the bull hammer, and then bad news, Barrett comes out, and then Sheamus comes with him, and now they've had a European alliance, and they want to go put a European style arse whooping on Daniel Bryan. Of course, they get to the ring, and here comes Mister Zigzag to make the save. Comes out and he calls, uh, he says some lame jokes, and. <laughs> Challenges them to a fight right then. Then the Big Show, seemingly out of nowhere, comes out. And he agrees with all the beating up on little guys talk. Which I think this is a dumb angle. I don't like the whole big guy versus little guy thing. Because it, it just... Too many stupid wrestling fans are going to be like, You see? This is exactly what's going on in the back. This is the problem. Vince hates the little people. And he's going to have the big guys come out. No, it's a. it could be an interesting storyline if... There wasn't all these people who were insane and just vanilla midgets, vanilla midgets, ah, the vanilla midgets. That's what they do, and it makes everything just uh, suck. So it is what it is, and we know what's going to happen with this type of situation. And so the big show's out there and saying, you know, I want to beat up on these little guys too. And then out comes Roman Reigns, and this is the Roman Reigns we want to see. No words, no talk, no nothing. Get in the ring and start pounding people. And Big Show tried to make a threat towards Roman, but Roman didn't care. He just rolled right in and took him down with a single leg, and the brawl was on. Quick brawl, faces clear the ring, and obviously this is going to set up a six-man tag for later on in the evening. Uh, Roman Reigns, now, it seemed like his initial pop was very good. It did not get a lot of booze. But directly after, it seemed like they turned the volume up on the cheers or, you know, integrated the cheers and made the cheers much more um, heightened than they probably were in Dallas. Dallas is rocking, by the way. Uh, seem, they seem to be really into the opening promo. So look for a six-man tag, I'm thinking, here. More than likely the main event. We'll see what happens uh, moving forward. A Miz TV segment gets uh, announced for later on in the evening, so that should be interesting. 
the, you know, as far as opening promos go, it wasn't that bad. It was decent. It was uh, not too long. There was some good talking, good back and forth, and a little bit of action. That's not a bad promo to set up just a random SmackDown. So uh, there we go. We're off and running on Friday Night SmackDown. Let's get back to it. 11 minutes in, and, um, you know, it, it's getting off to a good start. Of course, they now officially announced a six-man tag team match. Remember all times that I spout off, uh, like 11 minutes in, this is without commercials, without commercial time only. Uh, Six-man tag, so apparently Teddy Long is still working somewhere in the building, playa. And uh, the first match is, it looks like it's going to be Cesaro and Kid, the tag team titles with tag team champions with Natalia. God, every time I see Natalia, she seems to be adding new dimensions to her look and stuff. She is really evolving. Her appearance, she is stunning to look at. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and finally, the the tag champions are color coordinating, and they're looking like a team. So it's kind of cool, the direction that they've gone with them. So let's see this match and see where it goes. And hopefully it's a good kickoff match for Friday Night SmackDown. Thursday Night SmackDown, excuse me. Apparently I have hot rodders running up and down my street. The little crock rockets. Jesus, man. Because nobody can close the door in this house. It's okay, though. Let's get back to SmackDown before I you know, talk about wanting to kill my family. SmackDown time. Here we go. 14 minutes in and pretty decent start to this little match. The match didn't even start yet. The New Day came out. And the crowd is really giving it to him. And the New Day is doing a good job of reacting back. Looking confused and bewildered. I kind of like that instead of just going right to the, well, you don't want to like us? No, I, I kind of like that the, instead they're going to the whole, you know, you need to love us because we're the New Day. And we're clapping for you. I kind of like that because it's a slow burn towards super villainy. And I, I kind of like where this is going now. Um, it, this is a... You know what? This is kind of a new side to WWE. They did it with Roman Reigns. They stopped the something that everybody was going to hate. You know, Roman Reigns winning the title, and they changed it up. And now they've they're rearranging things, and they've gone a new direction. N new Day. It looked like they were going to try to shove them down our throats, whether we liked it or not. However, they listened to the crowd, and now they're changing their direction. This is really because of the New Day. A new day in WWE in a lot of ways. They seem to be gearing things more to what most of the older, smart wrestling fans are wanting. While at the same time, keeping that balance and making the kids happy. This is what we want to see. But yet, some still not happy. And they never will be. But let's just try and enjoy it. Let's see where this match goes. It looks like it's Biggie and Kofi. For the New Day versus the Tag Team Champions Kid and Cesaro. Let's get this going. 21 minutes in. And the first match is over. You know, I gotta say, for all the, you know, the, the storyline and booing and all that crap. And the complaining about those things. I gotta give New Day some credit here. Because they worked a really good match with Kid and Cesaro. This whole storyline... Um, you know, and not even storyline, the legitimate hatred of the of this angle is actually starting to play well into matches. Because while the match was well worked, and it should be considering that it's Kid and Cesaro, and they have really blossomed into a very good tag team. Um, Babe, go ahead. I'm giving you the sign to go ahead and make the coffee. It's okay. Well, I'm just telling you to go ahead. I mean, this is... When I give you a little finger signal like this, I'm not I'm not saying I'm going to finger fuck you. I'm saying go ahead and make the coffee. Okay. It's okay. Make the coffee. Well, I mean, I, look, for those of you, uh, you know, you can't see what's going on right now. But I'm, my wife's staring at me like I, I, she's not just waiting, you know, she's waiting to make the coffee. But she's staring at me and making me all awkward and, and uncomfortable. And I'm giving her a little finger sign to make the coffee. I think she got excited, thought that I meant I was going to finger bang her. And instead... She just stares at me some more. It makes me awkward, so I gotta break up what I'm talking about so I can tell her to make the coffee. I was distracting the dog because Alicia was giving the body a carrot. <sighs> Alicia, I'm doing. You know, I'm I'm really gonna kill myself. I'm gonna kill myself live on camera one day because I can't even do a show anymore. It's unbelievable. I need a studio. 
That's what I need. I can't. This is insanity. This is insanity. Can I go back to my review? Can I? You guys mind? You guys mind? I mean, only if you don't mind. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, like I was saying, Kid Cesaro has really blossomed into quite a tag team. And it's been quite interesting and a lot of fun to watch. Now, the interesting thing about this match, especially the finish, is while the finish was going on and there was outside shenanigans by Cesaro, uh, is, uh, Ze- uh, not Ezekiel, <laughs> Xavier Woods was arguing with fans. You could see him, and they weren't making a big deal about it. It was just happening. You could see it in the background. He's arguing with fans instead of paying attention to the match. It's like he's almost preaching to fans to try to get them to like him, and they're telling him how much he sucks, but he's focused on them, and his partners go ahead and get pinned you know, by Tyson Kidd. So it was kind of an interesting thing, and I think we're going to see more of it as time goes on, and it's just going to keep slow burning and slow burning. I mean, it's essentially what they did with Adam Rose in a lot of ways. You know, it was an angle that the backstage seemed to really be behind, but nobody in the crowd seemed to like. So eventually Adam Rose just turned darker and darker. It's essentially the same concept, but I think the New Day is going to be more effective because it's a group, and it's a group of of black men, let's face it. And people are going to automatically go right to the Nation of Domination, which that's what everybody's been saying. Nation of Domination and all this stuff. So it's, it's quite interesting to see where they go with it from here. Let's get back to SmackDown, and I'm probably going to go kill my family uh, while I'm watching SmackDown. 32 minutes in. Neville versus Curtis, Curtis Axel. Look, man, here's the thing. Neville is so damn good, it's not even funny. And I, I like Curtis Axel. I wish they would have something better for him. But the fact they're at least letting him keep this gimmick and keeping him on the main roster, that's a positive. And maybe this will turn into something more substantial for him down the line. Now, it's also completely fine with me that he's doing the job to guys like Neville, and especially Neville, because they seem to be able to work together. And Neville is really getting his footing under him. Like people, compl- some people, some people, not too many, but some people complained about his match with uh, Rollins. Like I knew they would. Oh, look, they're, they're burying him because he's little. No, they're not burying him. He went out and had a nice pre-rivalry match. They, a little bit of a warm-up for if they ever do decide to get into a rivalry. And it was pretty damn impressive. You know, Neville showed that he could work with anybody, including the world heavyweight champion. So uh, there is absolutely nothing that I think that uh, n- they didn't do anything to make me think that Neville is not a future star. And he is shining in every singles match that he has. Neville is not only right now one of the most exciting competitors in the WWE, he might be the most controlled and skilled high flyer I've ever seen in wrestling. I mean, he hits moves with such accuracy and precision. I don't. The guy just doesn't botch very often, and when he does, it he had a slight botch uh, in this match with Axel. It looked like it was Axel's fault. Axel didn't give enough give him enough momentum, but it didn't stop him. He just kept back flipping anyway. I mean, it's it's crazy the precise athleticism that he has, and it really is fun to watch. I love what Neville's doing. He's exciting. He's fun. Uh, he's got a good look to him. And he, the guy's just a, he's small, but he's a giant ball of muscle. He's just one tight ball of muscle. That sounded a little, uh, you know, homoerotic, but that's okay. We, we're not, we're not above that here. <laughs> it happens every now and then. But Adrian Neville hits the red arrow for the victory. Yet again, very impressive and a lot of fun. And he's getting put over by the commentary crew. Not only that, the crowd really seems to respond to him. I hope that continues, and I really do hope that the future is as bright for Neville as it seems to be. Let's go ahead and see what's next on Smack Digging It Down. 33 minutes in, 40 seconds. Uh, 33 minutes, 40 seconds in, I should say. Backstage promo with the Divas talking about their number one contendership battle royal on Monday. Natalia kind of still trying to play the the face there, but Alicia Fox and Cameron having no part of it. 
and go ahead and a uh, little pushing and shoving. You know, I, I saw what they were going for. I like where they were going for, but unfortunately the 3D was involved really didn't do a very good job of portraying the idea of what they were doing and the acting wasn't very good and it turned into a mess. However, it was still effective because Natalia pushing Alicia to the ground, I think was pretty cool. And that got a little bit of reaction that should set up a match for later on in SmackDown. I We'll see what happens in the Battle Royal on Monday. We'll see who becomes the new number one contender. But I like that there's a little bit more going on with the division. I think it's smart to have multiple angles going. It's not only smart, but it's fair, and it's the right thing to do. And even if you're not going to be pushing the Divas very highly, at the very least, it's going to keep you out of the friggin' uh, the eye from uh, and, and drawing the ire of people who are rallying against you and saying you're not doing enough for the divas and all of that so smart move by wwe even if it's just smoke and mirrors which i don't think it is i think it's legitimate i think they are really trying to for lack of a better term give divas a chance but they've got to take uh, they got they have to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to them and hopefully that's going to continue because it has been it has been most of them i should say Naomi's not one of them because I think she is squandering what she's been given, to be honest, because she's not performing and getting it done in the ring consistently. But that could change. We'll see. Let's go ahead and, and move along in SmackDown, shall we? 39 minutes in, we got ourselves a little diva action. I was right. Uh, turned into a little match between Natalia and Alicia Fox with, surprisingly, Cameron as the special guest referee. The match was actually pretty good. I have to give, uh, well, you know, Alicia, she's been another one of those people who's been very inconsistent in her time in WWE. She, at times, she can look brilliant. And this is one of those times. Her and Natalia worked a very good match. It was, was not very sloppy. It told a little bit of a story. Cameron added a lot to it by being a very annoying referee. But I have to give it to her. What she's lacked in the past in the ring, and I'm talking about Cameron now, uh, she because she has had problems when they tried to give her a little bit of a push before in the ring. She does make up for it in sheer attitude, and I kind of like that. I like that she has this attitude. I really enjoy the fact that she can get under people's nerves and be hyper annoying. Now, as for the match itself, pretty good. It was solid. Natalia ends up getting the victory with the sharpshooter. Really seemed to cinch it in. It looked very good, very technical, and it should not be surprising coming from Natalia. You know, a few months ago, Natalia was having in-ring problems along with having no identity. Now, not only does she have the clearest identity that she's ever had in her career and the most charisma, her ring work has been brought back up to the level that you would expect to see out of Natalia, and that's pretty fun to watch. So and it has to be partially because of the fact that it seems like she's being utilized better and she understands that and she's having more fun. See, that is taking advantage of the opportunities that are given to you, and that's a pretty good thing. After the match, Cameron turns on Natalia, turns on Vic, uh, God, why do I always want to call her Victoria? Victoria Fox, Vicky, Vic, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, Alicia Fox turns on both of them, gives them two really nice little DDTs, and then she screams at someone to give her her mirror, and she does her little, you know, glamour gimmick in the corner. Not bad. It was a nice way to end the uh, the segment. A little bit of intrigue into the Divas Division. It's not a bad thing. So that was kind of fun. What would you think of that match? Let's focus on that match for a moment. Tell me what you guys thought about that match in particular in the comment section below, okay? Or go ahead and tweet to me, Dave gave Divas a chance. <laughs> Hashtag on my Twitter at that on Davey. I'm just kidding. I'm talking out of my ass. All right, let's get back to SmackDown and see what's next, shall we? 50, 52 minutes in, and Bray Wyatt comes out, cuts a promo, talking about, you know, everything that he did with Eric Rowan, fixing him and everything. It was like, it was a very eerie, weird promo like he always gives. But, I mean, it's stuff that we've heard before. I like a little more diversity out of him. But, you know what, to be fair, I give him that criticism a lot when he speaks but to be fair what he does he does so well and it's quite entertaining so you can't complain from that aspect or that standpoint at all uh, eric Rowan comes out and they have a very hard-hitting solid match this was not a bad match it was a different type of match it was very hard-hitting and effective in that manner 
uh, they gave a little bit of time, a few minutes, definitely, of like six, seven, eight minutes. Was not a very short match, and that was good. And Bray Wyatt gets the victory, and then, you know, cradles his head, oddly and weirdly, after the match is over. It was a fun match. I mean, it definitely an angle that I wish would be done, and we'll see what Bray Wyatt is doing next. But um, it, it's not surprising that they're kind of going back and rebuilding him because it's what they had to do after Cena as well. So, But they're not focusing on the loss to Taker at WrestleMania very much, and I doubt they will until the time has come. We'll see what happens in the future with Bray Wyatt, but I think that there, he still has a very bright uh, path ahead of him. We'll see what happens. I'd like to see some higher-level feuds. Hopefully that will happen soon. And uh, it'll be fun for all. And then everybody rejoices. Rejoicing will hot by the masses. It looks like we're going to get some Miz action next. Blah. Blah. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and see what the Miz has to do now. One hour, two minutes in. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, Miz, Miz, blah, blah, blah. You know, the longer it went on, and this did drag a little bit. Summer Rae was out there and he was being a dick to her. But I have to say, man, Miz can be so effective at times when he's not being overly overbearing and annoying. When he just talks, he brings it down just a little bit. When Miz Dow came out, it was just effective. The things that he was saying were effective and it was it was getting across. It was making a connection, at least with me. And this storyline got a little bit of a, a, a jolt and hopefully it will continue to... Uh, draw to a conclusion really i mean because i want it to be over and i want ms dow to move on but I, like ms is saying i'm worried that when this feud is over ms dow is going to disappear again because it's a very good possibility and i really don't want to see damien sandow just copying other people either that's not a very fun thing to see over and over and over so it really becomes down to how to effectively end this and make him a star that really does Put him on the right path, the right trajectory. We'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, Sandow clears Miz out of the ring, decks him and stuff. And then he goes and he kisses Summer Rae. That was pretty cool. Uh, Summer is an interesting woman, man. I think she's really hot, but she's weird too. Like she's she's hot, but she's not pretty. Does that make sense? Kind of looks like Paris Hilton. She does kind of look like Paris Hilton. But I mean like... I don't find her pretty. I just find her steamy and hot and sexy. I, I, and like, I don't, I think I put women in a different class or anybody really, not just women. There's different forms of, 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 of beauty, I guess. But I don't think she's like a naturally regular, pr uh, pretty woman, you know, like you'll see some women who might not be smoking hot or anything like that, but they're just really pretty. I think that's what she's lacking. I think she's sexy. She's got this like really hot thing about her, but she's not, doesn't have like the, the, the regular pretty thing. Yeah, it's hard to explain. I'm not knocking her for it, but I think she's, I like her a lot actually. And it was a cool little extra added thing to the segment to get Sandow to put the lip lock on her. So that was pretty interesting. So we'll see what happens with the rest of SmackDown. But, of course, we know that most of this storyline with Miz and Miz Dow is just to uh, kind of pump up the Marine 4 release. Has anybody seen all four Marine movies? I mean, including this one when it comes out. I mean, you're a friggin' hero if you've seen all four. That's impressive. I don't even think I made it through halfway through the first one with... John Cena. Watch that? No, we tried to watch it, but we didn't make it through it. Yeah. We tried to watch it. Sucky duck. Yeah, it's sucky duck, no question. All right, let's get back to it. We're getting closer to the ending of SmackDown. Let's see what happens with the rest of the uh, show. Hopefully, the main event will be really good. So, six man tag for the main event. I gotta give it to it. This was a pretty damn good main event. It was a good match. I mean, it was not bad at all. Ziggler, I mean, there was a, too many good wrestlers in this match. Five of the six guys, and yes, I'm including Reigns into that category. Really, they Reigns might not be fantastic at, at, at everything technical that you want to see. And same thing could be said about Sheamus in a lot of ways. However, everybody in this match, and I'll even put Big Show into that category, does something very, very good. And look, 
I like the little two moves that he does, the power moves, Roman Reigns, uh, at the end of matches to get victories. I, he executes them well. And the fact is, what he's doing really well right now in the ring is look like a badass. The match was mostly carried by Dolph Ziggler. Uh, there was a, some good Daniel Bryan action as well. Big Show just, all he's got to do is step in and just be big and dominant. He's just got to throw punches. He doesn't have to do much else than that, but be an attraction, be a spectacle. And he's very good at that. So, you know, it is what it is. It was a really good match. I thought it was solid. I thought it was well done. Uh, the ending was really good. And the most important thing is Roman Reigns seems to be rebuilding. You know, I'm going to call this episode the rebuilding of the Roman Empire because it is really starting to gain momentum again. And this time, I think it, at least the Dallas crowd seemed to really be into him. And I'm sure a lot of smarter wrestling fans are really starting to see, you know, okay, he's paying his dues a little bit. He he took a really nice loss at WrestleMania. But they did it in a way to kind of make him look strong. That's fine. I think that that is starting to be a good thing for Roman Reigns. Look for him to be a big guy here in 2015 and probably be a Money in the Bank winner. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting to see where it goes from here. Roman Reigns doing some very good things to rebuild some of the momentum. That I mean, look, I can't even say that the momentum was lost at WrestleMania. It was lost in the weeks building up to WrestleMania. But now they shut his mouth and they let it go in and just punch people and, you know, and do some crazy things. And that's it. Just have him be a badass. That's all you got to do. He's got a good look. He's got athleticism. All he has to do is kick some ass. He doesn't have to do much else than that. That's all Stone Cold had to do. He had the right look, right attitude. And they found a wrestling style that was easy to maintain and, and fun to watch. And that's what I think they're starting to get with Roman Reigns here. And it'll be more interesting as time goes on. Uh, it looks like some good feuds have come from this six-man tag. We're going to see more building. Personally, I'm really getting into Sheamus and Ziggler. I like what they're doing when they're taking each other on. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll see a good match out of them in Extreme Rules. And honestly, I really do enjoy Daniel Bryan and, and uh, Bad News Barrett. I, I believe that those two have a very good chemistry about them. But I kind of want to get the feud over because I really, really want to see Neville and Daniel Bryan go. Oh, Jesus. Can you even imagine? So there it is. That's your SmackDown review. Let's see. What do we give SmackDown this week? I'm going to give SmackDown a 7, to be honest, because I wasn't disappointed with anything that happened. I thought I would be. It was better than Raw. It was better than Raw this week. Raw was, eh. SmackDown stepped it up a little bit, and there was a lot. It, a word I used quite often was effective. There was a lot of things that were very effective in this match. And, um, you yeah, know, I think it, it's a good building block going into the next Monday. So we'll see what happens. Should be a lot of cool things happening on Monday Night Raw. What do you think is going to happen? What did you think of SmackDown? Go ahead and write in the comment section below exactly what you think. And if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, hit me up there, at Dead on Day V. You can also uh, shoot me some memes there if you want to add to the meme pool. I will add your memes into it. All you got to do is tweet it to me or send it to me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash this guy's take on it. Don't ask me why. Uh, or go ahead and just hit me up on Skype. Add me in contacts on Skype. David Vancura, D-A-V-I-D-V-A-N-C-U-R-A -V -V -A -A on Skype. Add me. I'll add you back. You can call in on my Sunday show, which we are now only two days away from Sunday, one to three Eastern Standard Time, two hours. Two, two solid hours of viewer questions. Other than that, uh, make sure you're checking out everything else that's going on within the community. I make my return to Joe Cronin's show here in the next couple of days, not only for the Raw review on Monday, but we will be doing, it's confirmed, sometime this weekend we will be doing, Joe Cronin and I, State of the WWE, back together yet again, having some fun there. Make sure you're also checking out Tommy C, shot from the point. We had an amazing week, him and I, on In the Crease. Very good shows. If you want to laugh, if you want to talk hockey, and you want to listen to serious people, or not, most importantly, we're not serious people, but we're serious about our hockey, and we like to have fun and talk about hockey in a way that you don't hear all the time. 
because we're real. We just be real. We grip it and rip it and have some fun. We had some great callers, and it was a blast. So I hope you guys are joining us on In the Crease with Tommy C. Weekdays, Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And make sure you check out Tommy on Shot from the Point Live 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday should be an epic show with all the things that are going on within hockey. Last but certainly not least, my good buddy, Jeff the Huff Huffman, my co-host on the new baseball show we do on Mondays, Touch Em All, Grand Slam 87 on YouTube. He is killing it with daily baseball videos right now. So impressed with his analysis of the game. It really does humble me because he his baseball knowledge is... It's quite impressive, especially for a young guy. So I hope you guys are checking all that stuff out within the community. Dave Rose, Devious Dave Rose, make sure you're checking him out as well. Graham Hall, all the good guys. But uh, Joe Cronin Show, of course. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. I think we're wrapped up pretty good here. And we will see you next time right here on Dead on Day Productions. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time. Peace.